Thank you very much, Padma, for, for the introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be back to Phnom Penh uh, for, for this meeting. And of course, you know, I have met some of you, and some of you are new to me, but uh, it's a very, really good opportunity to uh, present some of the highlights of our progress of the first year. So I would like first to say um, that you know, I present uh, this work on behalf of uh, Dr. Delia Chris, who's uh, leading the animal and human pro health program at INRI. She's actually officially the PI of this project. Uh, but as I'm the regional rep for INRI in Southeast Asia and I'm based in Hanoi, uh, it's more practical for, for me to manage the project uh, on the ground. And uh, for that, you know, um, most of the work here, we work with the team in Cambodia, but Delia come from time to time for activities, and the next trip will be in October. And here you can see that, you know, the team is quite large because it's composed from different organizations, INRI, Emory University, and I'm very happy to have Professor Melissa Young who will talk afterwards uh, in, in this uh, project. So the project, uh, for some of you, uh, I think that who were not there last year, the name Safe Food, Fair Food for Cambodia, you know, like Dr. Sensovan said this morning, you know, life, livestock is growing uh, uh, sectors in Cambodia, they need a lot of animal source foods, uh, so we need, uh, but we need to ensure the safety of this food, but also many pe poor people want to have access to animal source food also, so we need to ensure also the equity, so this means the fair food, in football we, we, we always say fair play, and here we would like to, to use the same word, fair food for, for, for people here in Cambodia and the region. Uh, I just want to show you, you know, before coming to this meeting, we had uh, an annual review meeting of Safe Food, Fair Food Cambodia. And this is basically the, uh, basically the core team of INRI, uh, NAFRI, Selakrit, but also uh, uh, key stakeholders in Cambodia uh, to review our first uh, uh, result, result of the first year and discuss uh, the planning uh, uh, here in the same hotel. So here is the outline of, uh, of, of our talk. Um, I would like to come back a little bit on the objective of the study, uh, so that we, we, we position a bit uh, in the context of this uh, program. And uh, we would like to show you some first uh, uh, findings of the project, because the project, this is the major project of Cambodia, so it lasts for three years, so we are at the end of year one. And you will see also you have focus project, lasts for one year only, so we try to, to, to have this complementarity uh, of the project. And also, uh, we will talk about the partnership and the links to other projects and programs in Cambodia and some highlight of the next step that we want to do. I think that I will skip also very quickly these two first slides because Bola presented very nicely the role of livestock and animal source food uh, for people. And also, you know, Professor Ari Havila, you know, as the one expert of burden of uh, football diseases, uh, showing uh, all this importance of uh, football diseases related to food safety. But uh, the, the key message of this slide is, in fact, you know, when you work in food safety, you have a very large range of pathogens and chemicals uh, uh, contaminants, and of course, with a very limited resource, you cannot address everything. You know? We have different uh, priorities. So the importance is really to focus <coughs> our resource to make intervention, to understanding first, and to make intervention on the top uh, pathogens or con uh, chemicals that cause the most health uh, burdens in Cambodia. So, for example, one of the study of, uh, of INRI showing that ma among many uh, different zoonotic diseases, basically you have 90% of burden of zoonotic disease caused by only 13 uh, 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 pathogens, and you have many more 43 diseases, but causing very little in terms of burden. So, you know, if you have a little bit of money and effort, where do you invest? You know, naturally, you should invest on the you know, biggest burden of, of, of disease caused by this thing. So this concept, uh, this, the so-called uh, vital fuel and the trivial money will be applied also in food safety research and intervention. This is the first point. The second point is, in fact, the model system to manage food safety in many countries, in particular in developed countries, they use very successfully the so-called risk-based approach. So basically, you have three components. You know, FAO uses, WHO uses, and you know, OIE, they use also a modified version for, 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 for animal disease as well. So 
to manage the food safety in your country and in any other context, you need to understand what are the risks. So this is basically the job of risk assessment component. And most of the case, the risk assessment is done by scientists, by researchers, by people working for different institutes and universities. So it's very much science-based job. And you know, one of the main components of this project is about risk assessment. Um, and of course, you know, when you do risk assessment, you need to communicate all these risks and uh, initiatives to different stakeholders. It can be policy makers, it can be the community and consumer, for example. And all these results of risk uh, assessment can be presented to the policy makers. And you know, uh, uh, that is important because they have the power to decide what intervention, what measure uh, we can uh, introduce to reduce the risk. Uh, 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 food in, in a specific context. So these three pillars are uh, constituting the so-called risk analysis or risk-based approach in food safety. So this is basically the start of our uh, project and we have four, I have five main objectives. Now you don't need to read it because I will show you what we are doing here in the project. So we, we started actually the first component is so-called risk profiling. We try to understand what are the major problems of food safety in Cambodia. So we did several scoping visits. We did systematic literature review, training uh, on risk training uh, on, on risk assessment and uh, uh, the, the prior uh, prioritizations exercise with stakeholders to identify the, 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 the issue. So that is the first component. And we are moving to a second component, the so-called generating evidences on food safety by conducting more in-depth study around food safety issue in Cambodia. And keep in mind that because we are from uh, an institute working on livestock, and this program is funded by Livestock System Innovation Lab uh, from USAID, uh, the focus are very much on animal source food, uh, food uh, ASF, and don't confuse animal source food ASF with the African swine fever that we are talking a lot uh, today, and I have the opportunity to talk with Pierre from GDAF already this morning. And these five uh, key study composed by the household survey. So we do some uh, survey around Cambodia to understand what people eat and how people prepare food, what uh, food safety, how food safety is perceived by the population. We will, uh, we have done halfway a nutrition uh, survey to understand the link between nutrition and food safety. And uh, you know, Melissa will talk a little bit more about that. We will do, we will because you know we are in the first year. We have not done everything yet a survey at national level on different houses in, in animal source food in different markets. Uh, we are doing also the estimation of financial burden of foodborne diseases in Cambodia, and that is very much public here because we did it with hospital people, and we will conduct also a quite detailed quantitative risk assessment uh, uh, in future uh, to see how many cases of foodborne disease we have. And with all this information from component one, and two, we will introduce some intervention to reduce uh, a foodborne uh, a disease in Cambodia, and it's likely that we will target also market and trade level because that actually represents a lot of risk, and also coming up with some uh, intervention uh, and, and recommendation for the government. We are working uh, with different national partners. Here we have uh, uh, NAFRI, National Animal Health and Production Research Institute, the Estella Chris and Livestock NGO, but we bring also our American colleague from Emory, Emory University uh, to work on different aspects of food safety, and we are also building a rather a technical group uh, to work on food safety uh, in, in Cambodia as well. Now let me t show you a bit, uh, a little bit more in, in detail and, and some highlights of results we have done so far until now. Um, last December, uh, we organized a quite large meeting where we invited people working in food safety uh, in, in, in Cambodia and some of you were there. Um, but the key partners uh, we, we want to engage at that first stage is really people from six ministries. In, in Cambodia, uh, food safety are managed, is managed by jointly by six ministries, but of course agriculture and health are relevant ministries together with industry, hungry craft, you know, tourism, uh, etc., etc., and that we had a kind of you know in-depth discussion about the priority and issue of, of the country, and we come up with some ideas uh, to to analyze food safety uh, in the country. Uh, follow uh, uh, by a risk assessment training 
um, in informal value chain. Why informal? But because you see, when you look at the number of supermarkets in Cambodia, you know you can count easily how many you have in Cambo uh, in, in big cities like Phnom Penh and Siem Reap. And in many provinces, uh, you don't have basically a supermarket yet. So it means that you know most of the food, and in particular animal source food that Cambodian trade buy consume come from the so-called informal market or the wet market or sometimes you call traditional market, it represents basically 90 to, 90 to 95 percent. So that is really the important uh, pool of food that we, we need to work to ensure the safety for people. And uh, we, we, we conducted a risk assessment training for many people, in particular people from our key partners, but also from different university and research institute and, and, and Ministry of Health and Agriculture in Cambodia. We uh, work also on the equity and gender aspect. So that's why we conducted a gender and livestock training. And we had an expert from INRI to come uh, to work with different people, mainly focusing on, 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 on staff of the, of the project to address how gender can be included in different phases of designs and activities of the, of the project. So this is, uh, we have some report on that. If you are interested, we, we can share it with you. And uh, we did also a systematic literature review in Cambodia. I didn't put the slide here. But uh, that was a very great collaboration with uh, IUA, Royal Ari Country University, Faculty of, of Veterinary Medicine, where we tried to look how food safety research uh, was published in different uh, journals internationally, but also in the so-called grey document, in Khmer, in English, French, etc., but at national level. And you might be surprised because you know, the result of the 25 years of research in Cambodia uh, uh, no, sorry, for the last 20 years, we found only 25 papers dealing with food safety in Cambodia on various areas. You see, it can be, you know, uh, meat, it can be vegetable, it can be pesticide, microbiology, etc. But the number is very limited for, 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 for many years. So it means that, you know, the information is not so uh, systematic and uh, the, 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 there's, there are not many studies done on food safety in the country. We could collect many master and PhD students, etc., working uh, on food safety in local language, but also you know information from the media. And now you can have a lot of information on food safety uh, in pay, uh, newspaper, in radio, in TV station, etc., etc. So we combine all this together, and and as the main conclusion is, in fact, you know, the, the information on food safety was quite limited, and we combine all this discussion, and we have made a decision on priorities that we would do. So you know, pork and poultry have been selected uh, uh, for, for 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 this food safety study. I understand our, with our colleague from Safe the Children that fish is a very important source food, but actually it's not part of the scope of this study. But we try to link with uh, with study uh, also funded by USAID through the, the rice and, and fish program. In terms of pathogens, uh, Ari already showed you all this priority. So we will work on Salmonella uh, and Staphylococcus aureus. Uh, Campylobacter is important, but it's under discussion if we do it or not. Uh, let me, me um, you know, we had a lot of discussion yesterday in our meeting on so why we selected this pathogen. So Salmonella says no discussion. It's one why and it's of course the most burden of foodborne disease. Staphylococcus aureus is not, was not included in the list of pathogens that Ari showed this morning, but some study from INRI and other uh, organizations showing also that you know, it's quite present uh, in most of the case, and it would be good also to add more layer of burden of disease from caused by different pathogens in the, in the future report. And finally, in the context of the wet or informal market, uh, it's linked very much on the hygienic and, and, and practice of people, so this is one of the good indicators to work on. And of course, from the parasite point of view, we want to work on trichinella and cystosticosis in slaughterhouse of high-risk areas in, 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 in Cambodia. So you see that in our um, uh, NAFRI reports this morning showing that very low level of trichinella and cystosticosis in uh, Phnom Penh and Siem Reap, but this is nothing uh, new from that because that is from the contrary system. The risk is more from the remote area and the roaming pig system, in particular, uh, 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 how to say, uh, um, indigenous species. And we will sample uh, in 25 provinces, different market, and uh, also slaughterhouse in four uh, remote areas, and also with, with some urban focus of uh, Phnom Penh and Siem Reap. 
Here's uh, some results from the household survey. So actually this survey was conducted uh, with our colleague from Sela Creek. So Dr. Chaiti, he's the deputy director of Sela Creek sitting at the end of, of, of the room. Uh, we conducted in six districts around Phnom Penh. So we didn't uh, focus on very remote area. Or we didn't focus on very center, center uh, district because there you don't have um, a lot of uh, inhabitants uh, with food safety problems. So here's a list of district. And we uh, uh, conducted uh, a study in 200 households focusing on the pork consumption practices and healthcare seeking behaviors. And in, in, addi in addition to pork consumption, we also added questions on a large range of uh, diets that people are using. And here's uh, some highlights of, of these surveys uh, that we uh, observe a limited knowledge of food safety and, and foodborne uh, health risks in, in that area. Food safety come up as a one of the top priorities of that population, and as that is very easy to understand uh, in Cambodia. Uh, and also, they look also at the uh, different factors influencing the decision how people eat, how people buy food, how people prefer food in the family, and also some question to have an overview about understanding, but also the health status related to, to food consumption, um, and, and also how people uh, look for uh, healthcare facilities and, and and seeking behavior when we have health problems. So I mean that is a really the highlight. We have some detailed uh, result for that. And here, of course, you know, I would like to invite Melissa to come to explain a little bit what we did in in in, in uh, nutrition survey. Great. Well, I'm very pleased to be here as a nutritionist to be invited to this kind of meeting. I think is really something. Often in nutrition. We don't see the kind of results that we'd like to see, and I think it's when we do nutrition alone, we miss a larger picture, and this kind of multidisciplinary project is really what's needed. So as part of this work for the nutrition, we work to assess some of the current nutritional practices and consumption of animal source foods to determine the perception of risk of food safety and how this relates to diet, health, and decision making within the household, as well as identifying the barriers for children and mothers from accessing safe animal source food products for many of the reasons mentioned in the talks today of why pregnant women and young children have the most to benefit from animal source foods but are also at greatest risk. For this initial work, um, we had a master's student that worked on doing in-depth interviews with 26 women that had young children on their perceptions of nutrition and food safety. And then we also use this innovative strategy called photo voice. And this is a participatory method where we actually give cameras to women and we allow them to take pictures over two to three days and ask them to take pictures to answer the questions, how is your food purchased, prepared, distributed, and what's influencing decision making? And we do this because this is a way of really engaging women and getting them to open up and share, get them in the storytelling mindset. Because when a woman is looking at a picture of feeding her child and this is the meal, it opens up for a much richer and real discussion. So for some of the preliminary results, this is an ongoing data analysis, we were very surprised that among all of our participants, no one felt that their food was safe. And the primary concern was chemicals in the food. And we had some very striking quotes from the presentation, from the, the interviews talking about, mostly as I understand, our, our food may not be very safe because nowadays everything uses chemicals. And putting the links between consumption of chemicals and illness, um, including stomach aches and diarrhea. And this is one of the pictures from the participants when they were talking about the diet. Uh, we also focused in on the special considerations for diet for pregnant women and lactating women and how this may vary and their perceptions of the consumption of animal source foods for the growth of their children. Um, food insecurity and how this influences decisions on where to buy food and how much food is consumed. Um, cost of food, focusing on consumption of animal source foods for infants and young children, decision making within the household, as well as gender equity in intra-household food distribution. So this data analysis is ongoing, but a very exciting um, part of it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Melissa. So this is uh, important to have the collaboration from the U.S. University to help us to address the nutrition and, and food safety. And of course, Melissa uh, brought also her student to work uh, in, in Cambodia. Uh, this is the third and the last component that we have activity done in the, uh, in, in the project, otherwise, you know, other component will be done later. It's about how much 
the food bond disease cost to Cambodia. And for that, we uh, collected different cases uh, of food bond diseases in major, in a, a major hospital in, in Phnom Penh, and we would do in Siem Reap. Uh, so here is actually the only the data from uh, 104 cases collected in five major hospitals here in Phnom Penh. And the result, all these calculations showing the first result that, you know, for to treat one case of food bond diseases uh, in uh, Cambodia, it costs about $90 uh, to, 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 to patient. And of course, you know, this cost uh, uh, can be uh, broken in the indirect cost because people have to pay direct uh, drug and treatment in the hospital about 60%. And the non direct cost, indirect cost, you know, it's linked to the loss of the job when people are sick and the family member have to follow. And all the transport station to hospital is uh, represent about 40%. So we see that now this is the first ever uh, figure in terms of economic burden related to food bond disease, and hopefully that when you conduct a larger study, that will capture better the situation uh, of, of Cambodia. So that is an uh, interesting collaboration with CDC, uh, Ministry of Health of Cambodia. And also from the capacity building, you know, uh, and Mr. Sensovan mentioned uh, a lot this morning about how to build up the capacity for Cambodian partners to work in food safety, not only so senior people, but also young people uh, in Cambodia. So here, here we have a PhD student uh, working on, on the project, you know, Rotana is here, but also other young uh, graduate student from IUA doing uh, her study with Safe Food, Fair Food, and uh, we try also to bring um, a US students to, to work on that project as well. And of course, you know, when you come to work in Cambodia, the partnership is key, and you can see here, so we work with NAFRI, we work with CELACRIT, we work with Ministry of Health, we try to engage also University of Health Science, and we try to link with different uh, projects and programs working on food system, uh, food security, uh, in uh, Cambodia, but also regionally and internationally, like you can see a few programs uh, listed here. And as said from the beginning, we try to develop a rather technical uh, uh, unit from uh, Safe Food Fair Food to assist the existing uh, food safety working group in Cambodia. From uh, a next steps uh, point of view, uh, we would like to share with you that we will uh, conduct the national hazard surveys, 25 provinces, market and slaughterhouse, we will uh, do quantitative nutrition in addition to the qualitative uh, already done. Uh, we will develop a technical working group or we call the task force to uh, work with policy makers and research institute. Intervention later uh, coming uh, uh, next year and continuous activities on capacity building uh, communication uh, on food safety. Uh, here, for example, you can see the map. We will go to most of the provinces, but also we collect, uh, selected a few provinces where uh, data show the high risk of, uh, of, uh, of, of uh, trichinella and cystosocosis. Now, Padma, I, I think that you look at the time and I will finish in one minute, I think. And <laughs> you can see here that, you know, the, the task force of the technical working group in, in Cambodia um, uh, will be established to assist the uh, uh, technical working group in food safety. Look, this is a comprehensive list of military in Cambodia working on food safety, and you already have an existing high-level multi-sectoral food safety working group, but they had a few meetings only. I think that uh, we see the opportunity of Research Institute and Safe Food Fair Food Cambodia to bring some expertise to uh, help this group to have more data on food safety, and based on that, maybe they will have a great decision-making process to improve food safety in the country. Some output of the year one, which owns this paper and, uh, and communication. And to conclude, uh, we think that in the inception of the project and partnership development uh, uh, went very uh, smoothly for the first year. The team could conduct a few components with key highlights that I, I show you, uh, either on the household survey, nutrition survey, or hospital surveys. Uh, we got some challenges in approaching public health uh, institution, uh, but it's a uh, uh, on the good track to, to engage more. Uh, we already have the collaboration uh, with, with Ministry of Health, and, and uh, the project now enter in the very intensive data collection uh, phase, and, and hopefully that, you know, uh, some of the lab work and uh, surveys in the market will give interesting highlights on food safety and engage many partners in, in Cambodia. Thank you very much for your attention.